official Crystal City pilgrimage. Uh, throughout this weekend, we uh, have the unique opportunity uh, to learn with and from each other um, about the United States' largest multinational family internment camp about the American government's wartime collusion with 13 Latin American countries that led to the kidnapping and forced detention of thousands of people um, and families and the lasting impacts on our communities. Um, we will also be highlighting parallels to what our community experienced during World War II with the ongoing targeting and detention of minority and immigrant communities by the federal government today. Uh, I am a Gose, which is fifth generation Japanese American. Um, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> My grandfather, Edison Uno, uh, spent his formative teenage years uh, incarcerated at Crystal City. Uh, the years he spent here established the basis of his lifelong commitment uh, to fighting for government accountability and civil rights for all marginalized people. Those of us who were directly impacted and are descendants of those directly impacted by incarceration know what it is to carry fear, distrust, and uh, residual trauma from those experiences. But at the same time, we also carry our ancestors' compassion for one another, their resilience for the unknown, and a fighting spirit for what's right. Uh, we're so excited to be here and to have helped organize this pilgrimage. Kaz and I met at uh, Crystal City in 1946 when we were three and uh, four years old. <laughs> Carissa, she said she's a Gose lady. I'm a Nisei, so I'm feeling really good. <laughs> I was born in Callao, Peru, uh, in 1942. Uh, my dad uh, became very successful, along with many other Japanese Peruvians, and that was one of the problems that the Peruvian Callao, Lima, those cities had, were, were really um, almost uh, intimidated with the success. And that was one of the reasons why they made a deal with the uh, U.S. government during the war. And, uh, and, uh, and from what I understand, the government actually gave uh, Peru uh, like $25 million as part of this whole deal to get us out. It was hard for the government to exchange a Japanese American born here because they're American citizen to exchange them to Japan. So they start to round up Japanese from Latin America to be a part of the exchange. Uh, my father uh, was giving a sermon in the Konkokyo Church in San Jose uh, the evening of Jude December 7th. And conducting his sermon, FBI agents uh, who entered the church and uh, promptly arrested my father. Uh, uh, as a seven-year-old boy at the time, it was quite a confusing scene. Um, well, my father was first taken on July the 6th at night. They, all the ladies that were in front of the police station, they were sobbing quietly. And between sobs, I said to my mother, where is he going? And she said, we don't know. And pretty soon the men started singing and boarding the back of a truck. And, and I wanted to run over to him and hug him mm. goodbye, you know, but they wouldn't let me. Mm. And so then they all got on the truck and they started waving goodbye. And all we could do was just goodbye, you know, just wave to him. And, say goodbye and, and then as soon as the truck disappeared the ladies bawled out started crying out loud and I cried out too. It really warms our heart that though we came here 75 years ago involuntarily and as prisoners, we return today as friends and comrades in a bigger vision of a better America. I'm 
I'm so happy uh, that all of you are here. I wish that we could somehow erase the bad memories, but unfortunately what we can do, hopefully we can work together and make this one of the many events that Crystal City will be able to host and we can probably work on doing something, some establishment or something where we can gather a lot of memorabilia that we have in the city and, and in, in the county and we can get it together and do a wonderful place with wonderful memories so uh, everyone can come and, and, and visit and, uh, and, and enjoy yourselves here. Some of you have, sh have shared your stories and, and it, 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 is, it, it hurts me and, and it should hurt all of us. And as citizens of this great country, we need to remain vigilant and we need to educate ourselves and we need to educate our children so that, and of course, active, so that we can prevent this from happening again. There were 37 other Buddhist priests here at Crystal City together with Reverend Yamashita, 22 Shinto priests and two Christian ministers uh, in the Japanese section of this camp. This my, my dad told us about this. Some of us would pick oranges on that side of the fence. They would come over here and they would roll oranges underneath the fence to the Japanese Americans. And the Japanese Americans had things over here and they would roll back things outside the fence. That's how they would trade back and forth. Arturo uh, Gonzalez, he came over to me and said, here's some pieces from the swimming pool. And I said, wow, you know, how'd you get this? Well, he said, when they tore down the swimming pool, that wasn't done right away after camp. It was only about 20 plus years ago. He thought they would be of value to somebody. So he kept it for 20 years. And when we arrived there, he gave it to the, the survivors of the camp. And so this is just a story of two teenagers wandering down to this root cellar, sneaking out of the barbed wire, and finding light in a pretty dark place. And it's called Two Candles in the Dark. Gonna feel like a movie Teaching this girl how to walk Left feet she might have three But she sure feels nice in my arms Old folks sing an old song Playing the agreed upon key My eyes are stuck on her her eyes don't leave for feet. All this girl, no class ring. Maybe this is more than a lot. Brown boots, a dirty floor. Dancing like two candles in the dark. I call the quarter past Light knuckles on the bare door She got a brother down in Tokyo Pants I saw that name was in the jeweler store Wind around past the skaters and pond Just looking for a cut in the wire She got a key to the cellar door don't ask questions, man, just stand there and spy. And I'm very, very happy that some of you have decided to speak to our children on Monday. And I hope that you bring that up because I, I, I've come to realize more strongly that the only obstacles in, in, in our kids' lives or anybody's lives are those that we make up here. The physical ones, we can, we can uh, transcend, as you guys did uh, show. Uh, by transcending your experience.
behalf of all the staff here and our students, we welcome you, we truly welcome you here to our facilities. And uh, we thank you for guys for coming. At this time, uh, I am gonna invite my student council. My student council has some words and we're gonna invite Mr. Uno and uh, his committee members who put this pilgrimage together to say, uh, and give him a little gift basket on behalf of the student council. Can you all please come up as everybody? We have the superintendent here. Uh, Mr. Can you please say a few words? We learn from our past, and that has to be remembered, and has to be taught to our youngsters. And if there's one thing that my administration is going to focus on, it's these children back behind me. That's what's important to me as superintendent of schools. And for you to come in there and actually talk to our kids about what life was like during that time gives an invaluable lesson to them that they can build on so that the next generation is better than we are. parents entered camp childless and all of a sudden they had three children in a concentration camp <laughs> but the the point uh, of um, my wanting to tell you about our family was that at least uh, we were kept together as as uh, unconstitutional and inhuman as what they did to us was they kept us together. What the government do is doing now, separating children of all ages, from babies to teenagers, from their parents, is inhumanity on steroids. So, the message is, stop repeating history. Never again is now. Yo creo que ya es tiempo de poner un alto, de decir ya basta, tanto dolor, tanto sufrimiento de nuestras criaturas, de nuestros próximos líderes de este mundo. No queremos más encarcelamientos, no queremos más centros de concentración, no más centros de concentración, por favor. I think it's terrible that they should do that to their families to separate. We were separated with my father from my father for six months, and it was horrible. I mean, we couldn't stop worrying about him. We didn't know where he was or what he was doing or anything about him. But I think his children are the same. You know, they don't know where their next food is coming from and how their parents are. It must be awful for them, and I, I really feel for them, and I pray for them. I think most of us, especially the people who were uh, detained or put in concentration camps, I think we have to um, see that as a, as a call, that we can't just sit back and not do anything, that we have to have some way um, express our feelings about um, uh, the policies that that this uh, administration has. You know, their tactic is divide and conquer, mm -hmm. right? And it's so easy to, for them to do that to us. But if, uh, if their oppression becomes so strong that, that the people uh, really uh, bind together, that you know, that's our only chance, uh, I, I think. Our job as, as Japanese Americans is to be in solidarity with other communities in our fight for justice. There really isn't, it, you know, it, 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 it's like a platitude, right? But like there is no justice for some of us without justice for all of us. There's no collective freedom and liberation if it doesn't involve all of us and if we can't all wholly be, um, be free.